All right, everybody, I am back with my weekly brand new movie and TV show update. So hopefully this will be a little less divisive for people than some of my updates have been for this past week with some of the other stuff I do on my channel. Seems like there's nobody, somebody out there ready to complain about something. And it's these seem to be a little less divisive. If you're new here, please take the time to like the video if you enjoy the content. Subscribe and hit that notification bell and you will be notified as I have new videos go up. So we're going to roll into all of these things that I've gathered from the last week. So first up, I have here from cordcuttersnews.com that Paramount is reportedly going to be sold at an auction to the highest bidder. Now, this site is not usually known for doing breaking news, but this did come out late last week. This also caused uh, an uproar on Twitter because people said that you can't trust this site, but I am a cord cutting expert, and I can tell you that they have never given out false information on anything ever. And so I do believe that this is coming down the pike, and there have been rumors about this. And we do know that a lot of people have been going over from, from Paramount over to Warner Brothers. So there is a possibility that Warner Brothers may want to take them in at this auction but we will find out shortly. Now, this is just something that's pretty cool. This is from the Stranger Things, the final season, season five. This is from the set. You've got Batman and the Karate Kid 3 outside of this fake movie theater, which is pretty cool. So this is something I am looking forward to. Nobody 2. If you haven't seen the movie Nobody, go check it out. Uh, there, have been, there has been confirmation by the filmmakers that this is going to tie into the John Wick universe. But Connie Nielsen came out and confirms that Nobody 2 is still in the works. Uh, so that sequel starring Bob Odenkirk from both Better Call Saul and from uh, Breaking Bad will be coming back as Nobody. Got a bit more Ghostbusters news here for you today. It says Winston's a wealthy guy now and he's funding research into new technology. This comes from Empire Magazine. Winston is the core to the crew's return in the sequel, responsible for reopening the New York firehouse. Winston's a wealthy guy now, and he's funding research into new technology and the science behind ghost busting, Hudson tells Empire. So they're all going to be back. I actually have another photo I'm going to show you here of the entire crew, which is pretty cool. So as of last week, Wonka has passed $500 million worldwide and has become the highest grossing film featuring Willy Wonka. I really enjoyed this movie. This is one of my favorite movies of 2023. And if you haven't seen it yet, I think you're missing out. It's great for the whole family and does not have any type of political message behind it. It's just a good, fun, entertaining film. So this is pretty cool. For the Oscars this year, it says Rebel Moon, A Child of Fire, has been nominated at the 2024 Oscars for Best VFX. So that should be pretty cool. Now, I'm not so sure how I feel about this one, but Bill and Ted 4 is being written according to Alex Winter. Now, I don't know if I grabbed the story for this, but he said they came up with a really good idea for a fourth film. I really think they should leave it as it is. I don't think 4 will do even nearly as well as 3 did, although I do enjoy all three of the films that have come out. Uh, I would still watch a fourth, but I don't think it's going to be on the level of the other ones. This will be interesting. Deadpool 3 trailer is rumored to premiere the night of the Super Bowl. So that doesn't mean they're going to show the whole thing at the Super Bowl, what they did last year for these movie studios to keep from having to spend so much money on spots is they would give you little snippets during the Super Bowl in some of the commercials, like a 30-second commercial, but then you could watch the whole trailer later that night at those respective, you know, on YouTube for the respective studios. Now, I don't think this is a good idea, but Coming Soon asked, Would you like to see Explorers Remade? It's a 1985 movie starring a lot of famous people like Ethan Hawke and River Phoenix. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this movie as a child. I own the, the, the Blu-ray on this, and I don't think they should remake this. I think this is one of those films they should leave it alone. Now, I thought this was very unfortunate because Better Call Saul, in some ways, in some areas, 
was better than than Breaking Bad. But it says Better Call Saul has set an unfortunate Emmys record for most losses ever. It received 53 Emmy nominations during its run and never won a single one. That is pretty, pretty sad. Uh, that show definitely deserved uh, some praise, especially Ray Seahorn, who was his co-star in that. She did a phenomenal job in her role. Now, I was happy to see this. Jenna Ortega says each episode of Wednesday season two feels like a movie. That's pretty cool. I just finally watched the first season during October of this year. Uh, they they released it during the holidays last year, way after way after October. I think it was I think it was in December, if I'm not mistaken. And I thought they had missed the boat by not re- releasing it end of September, maybe early October. But we watched it this year. And I really enjoyed this show a lot, and I will definitely be watching a season two. Here's that other photo I promised I would share in regards to Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. You can see that Ernie Hudson is back, Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and also uh, Janine Melnitz is back for the film too. And she is, they they are all definitely uh, geared up. And it looks like they're either running into the firehouse or away from the firehouse or they could be running into somewhere where there's a bunch of ghosts. Who knows? I am looking forward to this film, though. Uh, it's going to be fun to see these guys back and uh, get the, get that rolling. And that comes out in a few short months. All right, so this is for those video game fans out there. Now, I've never played this game, but Until Dawn. It says a movie adaptation of Until Dawn is in the works. David F. Sandberg is set to direct with Gary Doberman writing the script. And that comes from The Hollywood Reporter. I think this is brilliant casting. It says the Encino Man actor has hinted that he hopes the role can result in a comeback for himself. Polly Shore will transform into Richard Simmons for a new biopic. This, this should be pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I don't know if they'll make it a comedy or if they'll do it seriously, but we will find out. So it's official. Gladiator 2 has filmed rapping. Uh, the star, Paul Mescal and Ridley Scott, the director, posted this picture on January 17th on Twitter. And they this movie does, I think, come out in August of this year. I shared this in my last update, that calendar of when these movies come out. But they, Gladiator 2 is finally getting released. Here's a little bit of Jason Momoa talking with Variety. He said, I've just never been a part of movies that, well, none of my movies are going to the awards, says Jason Momoa. I'm not really that guy, so maybe one day it'd be nice to do one of those kinds of movies where it's a really, really good movie. He's actually been in a few, like Dune and a few others. It's just that he keeps choosing the ro- the, the roles that make him look very silly, like he was in Aquaman 2 and also in the last Fast and Furious movie. So if he wants to be considered for movies that are going to win awards, he might want to take on some more serious roles. Now, this is a little interesting here. Uh, I'm kind of wondering why they did this, unless they're going to give the next movie a whole different name. But it says Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 has officially been retitled to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. So it's no longer Part 1. Part 2 was going to come out next summer, but because of the strike, they decided to delay it until the following year, which I think is unfortunate. I think they would have gotten more sales, especially with the lack of films coming out this year, that this should have come out this year. They might have been saving it, though, for next year, because I think where it's really going to hurt them is in 2024 because of the strike, but we will see. And this movie actually filmed both parts back-to-back, so there's no reason why it couldn't have released this year. All right, so for those people out there, if you have not checked it out yet, I highly recommend on Amazon Prime there is a program called The Terminal List starring Chris Pratt. If you haven't watched that show yet, I highly recommend it. It was one of the best shows I have seen in years. And we knew there were going to be some spinoffs, and there's going to be actually a second season of The Terminal List. But it says, from the producers, and Chris Pratt posted this, from the producers of The Terminal List and New York Times bestselling author Jack Carr, introducing The Terminal List, Dark Wolf, a prequel series featuring Ben Edwards and James Reese. Production begins early this year. And they gave a little picture, a uh, little uh, little tease there. This should be good. I don't know how many people out there are fans of The Flight Attendant, which was on HBO Max. It was one of their original series. It did have two seasons, but it has officially been canceled by Max. The series, which starred Kelly Cuoco, 
aired two seasons at the streamer. Now, I watched the first season just recently, as a matter of fact, and it was nowhere near as good as everyone claimed it was when, when HBO Max started. There was a lot of critical acclaim for that first season, and I didn't find it to be all that amazing. It was entertaining, but I wouldn't say it was anything super special. I will tell you that Kaylee herself did an amazing acting job in it, though. And I, ha- I have no desire to watch season two. Uh, that tells you how much I really enjoyed season one. I have no, no desire to watch season two unless there's absolutely nothing else for me to watch or want to watch. I might check it out at some point. So if people didn't know, Harry Potter is making a comeback at HBO Max. Well, just Max. They're going to be turning it into a, a, a TV series. And basically, each book is going to be a season. So they expect this to run six to seven years. And J.K. Rowling, creator of the immensely successful Harry Potter book series, is now reported to be an active executive producer on the upcoming Harry Potter series on Max. So they're going to redo this and dig deeper into those novels. I think it's too soon and completely unneeded, but it's something I will check out when it does release, depending upon the production value. Now here's something I think I've talked about in the past, but it says Tron 3 is now filming. More about the film in the comments. So Tron 3 is officially in production. It is officially filming. And I have very mixed feelings about this because the last film is one of my favorite films of all time. It's one of my top 10 favorite films that I've ever seen. And I was really eager to see everybody return for Tron 3, but it looks like a whole new cast, but it's still going to be a sequel to the other one. This is just another misstep, I think, by Disney. But we'll see when it gets released how it connects. But I'm really... Not happy that the cast from the last film is not coming back. Neither is the uh, the score, the people who did the score. And that score is an iconic score. Now here's something that I found to be interesting too. Jed- Jodie Foster came out. She's got the new the new uh, True Detective uh, you know, series that is on HBO Max. And she came out and actually confirmed that she was offered the role of Princess Leia, but she turned it down. This is pretty cool. I just finished Reacher Season 2 two days ago, and it says Reacher is already working on Season 3 for Prime Video. In fact, they are actually filming right now as we speak, so this should be out sometime in 2025. Andrew McCarthy came out. He's been doing a a lot of stuff. He's been traveling around with his son, and also he has announced that he is coming back with a documentary called Bratz which will be on Hulu. So it says Andrew McCarthy to reunite with Brad Packer's Demi Moore, Rob Lowe, Ali Sheedy, and more for the Hulu documentary. I will definitely check this out when it when it does get released. They made a ton of movies back in the 80s where I grew up, and uh, I, I'm i eager to see, see this when it does get released. So we have an upcoming movie called Madam Web, which is going to be coming out on February 14th, which is a spinoff of Spider-Man. Now, this is, this is what they said. The idea actually changed. Uh, well, first of all, it said Andrew Garfield was meant to be the Spider-Man of the Madam Web universe. But they came on to say that idea changed and it became Tom Holland. Then they reshot and removed everything referencing Spider-Man from the film. Shows you how in disarray Disney continues to be that they can't figure out what they want to do with these properties. And this movie looks very generic. I will be reviewing it when it gets released, but I really don't have a desire to see it. All right, everybody, so there is my movie and TV show update for the week. I am going to continue to grab things throughout the week and bring these to you every weekend so you guys have something to watch on the weekends as I take a break from doing most of my usual stuff that I do during the week. But I will be constantly bringing news, reviews, and all sorts of things on my channel. So if you haven't already... Like the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you will be notified as I have new videos go up. We will see you next week.